Once upon a time, a small band of Vikings found an island of ice and fire. It was a harsh but beautiful place, and for a thousand years they survived off the fish in the sea and the sheep in the meadows. Dirt poor but wildly creative. Iceland invented the saga, intricate tales of fairies and goblins, heroes and ghosts. And with these bright minds and strong backs, they evolved into one of the best educated and most comfortable societies on earth. A fine place to be a fisherman like Stefan, or a working mom like Inga. A place of democratic freedom and fairness for a prime minister like Gare, and a folk singer like Bubby. And then a modern saga began when the rulers of this place unleashed the bankers, allowing financial Vikings to search for plunder around the world. They made a few deals and brought home a fortune. They used it to borrow vast sums and make even bigger deals, buying soccer teams and airlines and grocery chains. They built banks in foreign lands and were hailed as heroes. Suddenly, in a country where, where, where you, you had never seen rich people, we had people who were, who were making a million dollars a month. Ships began to arrive filled with German cars and French wine. And their once humble currency with a fish on every coin became incredibly valuable. But while they could afford all sorts of foreign goodies, prices at home were going way up. So the island's rulers raised interest rates to control the inflation. But it didn't work. Because people realized that they could borrow Japanese yen or Swiss francs, put it in Icelandic banks, and make 10% without even trying. Everybody was getting rich. Well, many people were. And suddenly, for the first time in a thousand years, Icelanders didn't need to chase cod to make money. They could make money with borrowed money. And boy, could they make a lot of money. Stefan the fisherman left his boat and joined a bank. I got a bigger house, I got bigger and more cars and better snowmobiles. Have you heard these stories about fishermen who would sell their quotas and get into investment banking? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and ba buying malls. <laughs> and buying malls. <laughs> yeah. Booby, the blue-collar folk singer, started selling his music for commercial. He became a judge on Icelandic Idol and began hanging out with those financial Vikings. And Inga and her husband began spending less time with the kids, more time at their bank jobs. Everyone had to have the largest cars, the biggest houses, and people our age, uh, around 30, they were just floating in money. I kind of felt like I had arrived in Paraswell in the movie it's, it's a Wonderful Life. Everything had changed so much, so fast. During this party, few people were concerned that Iceland's big banks had borrowed six times more than the entire nation produces in a year, or that they had vested most of it in something from America called mortgage-backed securities. After all, a big bank in New York had done the same, but when that bank crashed, Iceland's economy followed, almost overnight. I lost a lot of money. <laughs> I, I, I lost my job. I owe a lot of money. I lost everything. I lost millions. Technically speaking, we are bankrupt. Like so many Icelanders, the value of their home collapsed almost instantly. And instead of owning much of their home, suddenly they owed the bank much more than it's worth. People look to their government for help, but they seem confused, paralyzed. Crowds began to gather outside Parliament, growing bigger and angrier by the day. All kinds of people from all the different political parties, from all walks of life, people you had never seen protesting before. It's now known as the Pots and Pans Revolution. No injuries, few arrests, and instead of blood, streets ran with thrown food. But it was enough to force special elections. The prime minister replaced, and two protesters were voted into parliament. You got it all. Yeah. <laughs> now you are a member of parliament. Yes, I am. <laughs> That's amazing. So from, from out here to in there, yeah, in the yeah. space of a few months. Yeah. Some think testosterone is to blame for most of this. Unlike the rest of this gender equal country, it was mostly men running those banks and taking those risks. So more women now share the power and will help guide the recovery. And there is so much to recover. Unemployment is high, malls are empty. 
grand project, silent and unfinished. Stefan, he hopes to return to fishing. Inga writes an advice blog for other unemployed moms. Booby is singing protest songs again. And like most of the people he used to lead, a former prime minister hopes hard work, simple desires, and the sea can bring them all back. In a land rich in sagas, what's the moral of this story? Let it be a big fish in a small pond than a small fish in a big pond. We still have to sail the ship home. I mean, through the hard times, it's, it's through them who we become who we become. <laughs> what is important in life? It's only now, the present, today. I got a newborn baby. I got a beautiful wife. I have friends. I have family. I have my guitar. And that's all I need. Life goes on.